back. Okay, so the first thing we're going to take a look at is the very first legato melody line that we have in the piece, uh, which is coming from the Legato Women's Divisi TS, or Time Stretch Patch. Uh, for the purposes of this screencast, we're not going to take a look at every single region and, and every single melody line. I basically wanted to just focus in on some more of the advanced um, parameters that we have in these patches, uh, just to kind of give a backdrop to what techniques were used uh, to try to bring out as much realism as possible um, throughout the piece. So in order to do that, um, the three main areas that I really focused on, especially with the leg true legato patches in this situation, is the speed knob, which I have automated to CC16. I have the swell knob automated to CC1, or my, my mod wheel, which is your basic dynamic crossfade. And then I've also automated CC7, or which is your general MIDI volume, which I tend to use uh, in pretty much every patch in tandem with my dynamic crossfade, just so that I could have a full control over the overall volume. Uh, so as I play this, take careful attention to what's going on with the speed knob. Basically what this does is when you start to have slopes in the data right here, the speed knob is going up and the actual time of the transition is constricting so that it, it makes for a faster transition. And when it's down, it's obviously at the slower se section so that you have more of a uh, portamento or a slower transition to your legato phrase. So take a look at that. You'll be able to see it on the user interface uh, as well as what's going on, and we'll move on. Alright, so now for the men's legato phrase that we hear in the intro to the track. Uh, same thing, it's the men's Divisi time stretch uh, legato patch, uh, just focusing on the ooh. Uh, for this particular line here, I'm actually just leaving the speed knob at 61, which is a pretty moderate, uh, it's kind of in the middle there as far as the speed of the legato transition. Um, and there's not as much um, dynamic fluctuation as you saw in the women's line here. Uh, so you can just, I'm going to play this and you can hear how this comes together uh, from the men's side. So this next section we're going to talk about, jumped a bit of a head into the piece here. Um, now we're up to the phrase master marcato sequence that we were talking about earlier. Um, and what I want to do here now, how I approach using the marcato sequences um, may not always be the easiest route to get to. Uh, and it's basic, it's really just a personal preference of mine how I like to set these up. Uh, I actually keep two separate MIDI regions uh, for both. If I'm going to be using the men and the women's portions of the choir, I actually set up two separate MIDI uh, tracks uh, for both men and women. So reason I do this, and if you could see here, and sorry I have this uh, magnified so small right now, is that by doing that, um, it gives me a little bit more freedom as far as when I can start and finish the actual marcato phrase. Uh, so that for me, when I, I find just setting it up this way, it actually saves a, a lot of time uh, because I'm able to uh, kind of spend less time on, on worrying about when I'm starting my next phrase and you know manipulate manipulating my cutoffs so that I'm not interfering with the next notes, um, that uh, it just kind of, it, it works for me that way. So like I said, not entirely necessary, uh, but I just wanted to kind of point out that uh, this is the way that uh, I like to approach doing the marcato phrase sequences uh, with sound irons choirs. Now I just want to uh, quickly point out how the actual mechanics uh, of the patch is working in context of the performance here. So 
Uh, what you see here on top, I have key switches aligned uh, up towards the upper register of the keyboard, and then I also have just these two key switches that uh, get started on the bottom here on the lower portion of the register. Now, first off, what this one does is if we take a look over here, here's the actual phrase master patch itself. Uh, and you'll notice that we have all these different phrases that we could select. And, and each one, you could have different uh, syllables and choose them to be either staccato or marcato. Uh, whichever uh, you're going to need for that particular portion of your track. Um, for this track, I use just strictly the marcato phrases, um, and these are the different syllables that we have. You have a, e, e, u, e, m, o, u. Uh, sorry if I maybe have mispronounced one of those in there. Uh, but um, basically what the key switch does on the bottom here is is that's telling us that we're starting on phrase one. Whereas if I moved up to the next um, half note there, it would tell us that we're going to start on phrase two, and then you would have your sequence there. So uh, for the purposes of this track, since I'm using the two independent um, regions for each section of the choir, uh, I only needed to fill out phrase one, uh, which, like I said, that's what uh, these two key switches are at the bottom. Uh, now moving up to the top here, uh, the key switches that you see up here are letting us know, or it's letting um, Cubase know in this situation that um, you know at this point we're going to start on this syllable. It's basically just letting you know um, which syllable that you're going to be on. So as you can see, they're all moving up um, by half steps there. Uh, so, and the reason, not always entirely necessary to do this or, or get that crazy either. Um, it's just that, uh, you know, when I'm actually working with the tracks and, and getting in deep with the editing, you know, and if I'm going to be starting, you know, right before the beat or afterwards, it's nice just to have uh, the key switch there uh, so that I'm always going to be on the right syllable. So that's all these are. So, uh, and... At the automation that we're looking at the bottom here, I have basically a CC1 assigned to the dynamic crossfading. Uh, and then also I'm using CC7 again for just general MIDI volume on the bottom. So I'll play this patch, just the men on its own, uh, and you can hear uh, how all of this works in tandem. <laughs> Here is the women's portion of the Marcato phrase section, and it's literally just the same exact idea as we saw for the men's portion. As you can see, I have the key switches up top, which control which number syllable I'm on, and then I have the two key switches on the lower register, which just indicate that we're going to be staying on phrase one. So really, same exact idea. So I'll go ahead and just play this on its own. You see we just have some minor swells in the CC1 and then also the CC7 for overall volume uh, are the two parameters that we are automating in this section.
All right, so we're coming up towards the end here. Uh, what I have selected right here are the, uh, towards the outro of the piece, I have the women's legato phrase and the men's legato phrase, uh, both just as before, they are the, the VC true legato time stretch patches. Uh, the women's phrase is the one that I have actually selected here as far as the CC data. Uh, and as we had uh, discussed earlier in the, in the screencast that I have CC16 set up for speed. Um, CC1 here is just for dynamic crossfade. Uh, so as you can see for the women's portion of this final phrase, and, I, and I'll play the two, the men and the women's together so you can hear them in unison. Uh, towards the end here, uh, where we pick up a little bit of speed, I've raised the speed knob so that the transitions are a little bit closer together. Uh, so you can hear it uh, just with these two tracks um, held in unison soloed. <laughs> All right, so we're at the very end of the track right now. And uh, what we're going to take a look at, and a couple things I want to point out at the end here, are the two main patches we're going to be looking at are the Vowel Master Men de VC, and we'll also take a quick look at the Vowel Master Women de VC. And similar to what we saw earlier on the Mercado phrase, uh, what you see up here are my key switches, uh, which are basically going to be changing the syllable, and in this case, uh, the tenor. Uh, from what you're seeing. These are all done on a single MIDI track, by the way. Um, and the other big pieces of automation that we see here is I have CC11 assigned to the blend knob between the basses and the tenors. Uh, so you're going to hear it on this first chord. Uh, it's going to transition starting with the E and the bass to the U and the tenor and then back to the bass again. Uh, you'll be able to hear it when the track is soloed. Uh, which is a nice thing to be able to have that type of independent control over certain sections like this. And also here again we have just the CC1 for mod wheel, uh, dynamic crossfade, and then CC7 for the overall MIDI volume. So I'm going to go ahead and play this and uh, you just take a look at what's occurring in the automation and then also uh, what's happening on the vowel key switch changes. And for one last time, just for good measure, we'll check out the same idea on the women's master vowel DVC patch. Uh, so here we go. And there you have it. That brings us to the end of this screencast. I'd like to thank you for allowing me the opportunity to take a walk through this track. And hopefully you found some of this information helpful and or entertaining. Uh, for more information on this product, as well as many others, head on over to soundiron.com for more information. And until next time, this is Ryan Scully, and I look forward to seeing you again. Take care.